Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Ron Paul Liberty Report. I wanted to talk about economic policy today. We spend a lot of time on civil liberties, which is crucial. Matter of fact, if you deal with civil liberties, you can deal with the rest of the problem, and also foreign policy. And uh, I want to talk about economic policy. Also, a significant economic report that came out today. And the, it, the report came out about the uh, uh, retail sales uh, being a surprise down. Actually, it didn't grow, but they were expecting some growth. But the fact that they were totally stagnant was a strong negative for the market. And one headline said that uh, gold uh, responded significantly and jumped over $1,200 because of these weak uh, retail sales. And I found that, you know, rather interesting because sometimes headlines don't tell the whole story. Because in many ways, if the retail sales had jumped a whole lot, that would be justification for gold to go up because then we would be back into price inflation going on. But right now, we're in a mode where the markets uh, uh, anticipate what the Fed will do. So bad news is good news uh, for the markets in some ways. The bad news is that the economy is very weak and therefore uh, the Fed will keep printing money and that'll be good for gold. So, uh, and, and that is true. If you keep printing money, it's good for gold. But if you had a, all that money circulating and boosting prices in the economy, uh, that would, of course, would be good for gold too. But uh, there's such a contradiction going on because we have so many government reports and people anticipating and the stock markets are high and the bond market's high and a lot of malinvestment out there. But right now, there's uh, essentially two economies, the economy for the rich and the economy uh, for, for the poor. But there's a record number of people out of the workforce now, over 93 million people. And you say, well, yeah, but the unemployment rate is low. Well, if you don't count people, <laughs> the unemployment rate is going to be low. So uh, I imagine that you've uh, paid some attention uh, to this and what's going on in the economy. Yeah, it was, you know, it's interesting you talk about the, the super rich. And one thing that's been in the news this past week is a, is a Picasso painting that went for a record amount, I think $180 million the, the painting went for. And they say that there is a, a good deal of art that's going to be going on the market in the next couple of weeks, somewhere in the neighborhood of $2 billion. So is everyone just getting interested in art or what's happening with these these huge prices for these things no the people who are making money can uh, thank the fed the people who uh, lose their jobs they have to blame the fed but this is not unusual uh, when money is being destroyed and there's lose, loss of confidence in the currency and not many other places to go, I mean, how many more bonds do they want to buy? Matter of fact, uh, just the last uh, couple of weeks, there was a significant drop in uh, sovereign bond values. So people don't want to keep buying bonds, and stocks are very shaky at this high level. Uh, so people look for hard assets, and one of the hard assets, especially for the rich, and they're the ones who have all the money, and they're getting out. So I think it's a sign that uh, you're going to see significant depreciation of the dollar and, and the inflation rate rising even according to government statistics. The other thing that goes up under these conditions uh, before everybody's rushing to buying gold and gold going to two and three thousand dollars uh, will be numismatic coins. Numismatic coins go up uh, quicker than, than the bullion coins because the wealthy will want to buy these uh, as well. But no, I think this is a, another, another bad sign of the economy and how, how weak it is. And uh, the, the other thing that I watch carefully is, you know, the value of the dollar. Well, first, I look at the pro gold prices. That tells you long term the real value of the dollar. So when I started looking at the dollar gold ratio, it was $35 an ounce. So it was a very correct assumption that they were going to print a lot of money when they got off the gold standard. And, and sure enough, gold went from 35 up to 1800 now down to 1200 So long term, that is a, a very accurate measurement. On the shorter term, uh, there's a lot of trading going on, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day. And uh, those with a lot of money, instead of buying paintings, they can't all buy paintings and coins. What they do is they trade currencies, and there are currency wars going on. And the dollar in the last year or so has benefited tremendously. The index went from 80 up to 100. And now, though, it's backed off about five. Under this news today that we had uh, about retail sales, uh, the uh, dollar actually 
actually backed off like a percent, which is significant. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that. Well, that, it, it looks like that re was reflected in the gold price, but it also was a reflection that people were thinking, oh, maybe uh, for now we can trade and buy euros for a short time. But I'm convinced. You know, that long term, all the paper currencies will uh, be devalued. They'll be devalued constantly. But on the short run, there's a lot of trading going on. There's fundamentals, but there's technical factors. There are uh, emotional and uh, subjective factors that go on. So there are a lot of factors that determine day to day prices. You know, one thing I noticed on Zero Hedge recently was an interesting article. The headline tells the whole story. Almost half of U.S. states are officially broke. And uh, it starts out talking about Louisiana, which was fairly uh, reliant on oil prices. And the oil prices, of course, have gone down over the past few months. And, and they're in, in pretty dire straits. Where does the state bankruptcy and oil prices, where does that fit into this? Well, I think that is significant, and that's a, a factor that has occurred. Prices went down, and even, even Texas has had uh, some uh, setbacks because the price of uh, uh, oil is down, and also uh, uh, drilling for oil is, is way down. But there's also these statements, too, that, uh, and that might be the reason some of these states have had less revenues and they're go getting into bigger debt. But there, there was one piece of new news that I saw today and said, oil is not coming back. And uh, I would say first, uh, how, the, how do these people get so smart all of a sudden? <laughs> but there are too many factors involved. Uh, but most people think about, say, the price of oil or the price of a farm crop, supply and demand. Of course, we all know supply and demand is key for setting prices. And when you don't have that, you don't have an economy, you have socialism, and, and the markets break down. But what they fail to look at is the, um, is the value of the currency, the supply and demand of the currency. So even if you had stay, relatively stable supply and demand of a, of a product, if all of a sudden you have way too much supply of currency, the currency is devalued. So that, that, that has an effect as, as well. But this is what they can't measure. They, they, uh, they, they ignore the value of the currency. So all kinds of things will affect that. Right now, I think we're in the early stages of the dollar being rejected as a reserve currency, and that's going to help push oil prices up. Oil went down under $50 an, uh, a barrel. Now it's over 60 so there's a significant recovery. But I think oil is capable of re not only reaching 100 but when times get rough, which they're going to, oil will be a lot more because the dollar will become uh, so, so weak. Uh, but there's other things. You know, uh, you and I have talked a whole lot about the, the military operations going on in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia, I can't remember when the Saudi troops were so involved, and they're involved in this civil war invading another country, and we're their partners. I mean, who knows? And the Iranians aren't going to sit idly by. You know, if they're not even allowed to take, uh, uh, go take their ships in there, they might resent this. So a major, major war could break out, and that would be another factor. So this whole idea that oil is not coming back, they mean the oil is not coming back in terms of dollars. I don't believe that. It will come back. But uh, what, what do you think about this, uh, uh, the, the military expenditures right now? Because that has an effect on our budget. Yeah, it's funny, you know, the, a lot of the, the, the hawks in the, in the House and even among the potential presidential candidates on, in both parties uh, claim that Obama has gutted the military. But I was looking over some numbers, and uh, George Bush's defense budgets averaged about $600 billion uh, while he was in office. Obama's thus far have averaged almost $700 billion. That's a huge increase in defense budgets. And uh, despite all the talk about the sequester, so there's, there's clearly a ton of money being spent there. Weapon systems are, are becoming much more expensive, uh, much more technical. And, uh, you know, you just see this, this massive increase in that sector as well. You know, Daniel, they always have that saying, just follow the money. I'd sort of like to follow the money that we take from our taxpayers who are having a difficult time making a living. 
uh, pumping it into the military industrial complex. Their prices go up. They make a lot of money. I wonder if they're buying valuable paintings these days, you know, to escape the harshness of, of inflation. So that may be the case. Now, a, a minute or so ago, you mentioned about the 22 states that are in deep debt. And I think this is something that uh, is very important because debt is one of the things that is characteristic of easy money and credit because people go into too much debt. That was, uh, there was a limit on the debt that uh, Detroit could assume. There's a limit that Chicago is assuming. There will be a limit on what our country can assume. The, the uh, housing market, there was a limit. So debt is, uh, excessive debt is a consequence of an easy money policy. And of course, Keynesians, the Paul Krugmans of the world, say that people like me, we just worry too much about debt. What we need is more debt and we need, we need more spending. So I think that is a significant number, those 22 states that are having trouble. And of course, it's going to contribute to uh, chaos in the streets too, because they can't tax to raise this money. And the states are generally obligated to balance their budget. So what are they going to do? Cut some of the social services? That's when I fear a lot of danger. Yeah, there, absolutely. <laughs> there, there, that's for sure. Um, you know, the uh, import prices as well have uh, gone down dramatically. And some people may use that as an argument. Well, Ron, you worry too much. That's deflationary. Uh, oil prices are down, and uh, these prices are down. But uh, that is not deflation. Deflation only occurs when the money supply shrinks and the value of the purchasing power, the dollar or the currency, actually goes up. And that is not occurring. We are just accumulating more and more debt. And there is going to be an end to it. And I think some of the things that we've already mentioned is an indication that we're getting closer and closer to that time when, uh, you, you know, push comes to shove. And, and even today, with that reaction to that downturn, you know, the stocks went up initially. But that doesn't mean at the end of today the stocks are going to be high. Uh, it also means that uh, there will be people watching very closely, uh, you know, the, the gold market, too, because the gold has been floating around 1,200. It goes down, up, down, up. But if it really breaks out at 1,200, the traders, the technicians are going to join the fundamentalists because as a fundamentalist, that's inevitably going to go up. So when the technicians join in, then you're going to see some rapid rising uh, of, of these, uh, of the precious metals, as well as all other other commodities but uh, if we're looking for a scapegoat if we look to find to bl blame somebody guess who I would blame number one <laughs> that of course is the, the word <laughs> <laughs> that is the Fed but the Fed is a consequence of an overall policy of people wanting something for nothing and us fighting wars that are useless and some people still believe that war is good for the economy it's a system of values it's an economic philosophy and that is what's driven us. But if you didn't have a Fed to feed the money in and, and monetize this debt and produce all the debt and the malinvestment, believe me, we wouldn't be in this mess. And those who think that the correction occurred in 2008 and 2009, that is a dream. All we did was shift the, the pain and the burden away from the wealthy, give them a break, allow them to go back at it again and dump all these problems on the poor. And that's why we have 93 million Americans now that are underemployed, unemployed, and uh, I, I think that time is running short. Hopefully, our side can wake up more people and have a greater conviction in the ideas and the principles of liberty and peace, because it, with, those un with that understanding, believe me, we could solve most of our problems. I do want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report, and uh, come back and visit us soon.